All right, let's go. This is our drop cam. It is a deep ocean autonomous camera system that goes down to the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean and captures footage. As an electrical engineer at National Geographic, my role is to help develop and design various features of the drop cam and to help support its deployment out in the field. When I was younger, I really enjoyed tinkering and I wanted to be an inventor and I wanted to be an astronaut and I wanted to be an explorer. So this is really my dream job because I get to tinker with technology every single day and use that technology to explore some of the most remote and extreme places on the planet. Standard operating procedure with the drop cam is to do a quick buoyancy test before we deploy it. Here I've dropped it into our tank and we can see that it is positively buoyant. It is floating. The drop cam is fully autonomous and it's tetherless. It's lightweight and portable and it's able to go way past any depths that humans are able to go. Most humans are only able to go maybe a hundred something meters down into the ocean. But our newest drop cam can go down to 6,000 meters deep. We make use of the force of gravity to pull it all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. It has an anchor on board that is not buoyant at all. It's usually a bag of sand, and that pulls it all the way down to the bottom. Our release mechanism is called a burn wire. So this wire right here corrodes after a predetermined amount of time. Once it's done with its mission and it releases the sandbag, now it's positively buoyant, so the buoyant force is pushing the drop cam back up to the surface. Part of the reason that the drop cam is positively buoyant is that air is less dense than water, and we have air inside of our hollow glass sphere. So since the water surrounding the camera is more dense, it's going to be pushing up with a positive force, that's the buoyant force. The drop cam itself typically stays down anywhere from two to six hours. It just depends on the kind of mission that we want to program, and sometimes it can go for even longer. After the mission is done, it automatically releases itself and comes back to the surface. When it's at the surface, it has a radio transmitter on board that transmits a beacon that we can hear on our radio system. There's also a bright orange flag on top. So whenever we're honing in on the beacon, we're scanning the horizon for the orange flag. Once it's on the boat, we charge the camera, we download our footage, and we get it ready for the next deployment. It's such a challenge to design this type of technology, but that's what makes it so much fun, is because it's such a puzzle that I get to solve every day at work.